So artists were given a choice of uh, directors they want to select. So after reading this story of uh, Bifaria and the uh, screenplay, whatever, so I adopted to enter into this. And it was quite successful then. And even today I feel that 16 years things are there with me, but again I'm still quite successful. Yeah. So in, uh, yeah, it's a process. Yeah, it's a process. Yeah. So things are going on. So you can hang on to the mic because this is a question to all three of you. Uh, why did you agree to be part of the show and what personal narratives do you want to drive through to your involvement? Um, because I was in Agriba for some uh, uh, years and that is how the uh, diaspora, the part of uh, homesickness has developed. That has uh, immediately once you said you were intrigued with the topic, I was to at the same number to come and if I had a home sick immediately then during Saturday Sunday I used to take buses and come. Yeah. So because that time there were no direct buses or train was also stopped for the not gate or something. So I had to take three or two or three buses to come to the world. So different things. So I used to take ordinary buses and yeah. yeah. So that travel has finally been fruitful in this thing. <laughs> so, would you like to tell us about um, it? It was the first meeting with Wendy when she said, Koi Badu, Kesha Haas, in Kokiri. And then she put out her project, like, this is what I want to do. Would you like to be a part of it? I said, yes, definitely, because this would bring my memories of what was formed down and just to be that etched behind my mind. And I just wanted to be it all out. I have been very thankful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, look, basically I agree with you because of your charm. <laughs> 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 well, let me tell you one more story I just remembered because 0832 is connected with telephone. And, um, you know, there used to be there's a hotel um, in the restaurant called Okokero. Now, this is the 1980s. Uh, it was not very easy to make a phone call anywhere. Uh, I had a hospital in Kalangut and uh, to get an anesthetist from Panjim, uh, I had to make a trunk call, so I had to book a call. Panjim, my telephone number in Kalangut was 17, so there were only 17 phones. And one of them was mine because I was a local doctor. So, and then uh, the Taj Hotel came and then the Taj Hotel had a direct line so whenever I needed my anesthetist, I would rush to Taj and call the anesthetist. Yeah. And then, there was a wonderful business which was started by Delphine, who uh, was uh, one of the guys working at uh, Oak uh, He had an internal connection with the telephone department. Internal connections become very important in India. You get many things done. And he had created some 10 cabins in Oak There were small cabins. And uh, the husbands were working in the Gulf and the wives, whom I call green widows, would go there to talk to their husbands. And this was a wonderful business model. The wives would be there, they would order their food because the telephone would take about one or two hours to get connected to Dubai or to any other Gulf country. And they would eat their food and then they would say, okay, Maria, your husband. So Maria would go to uh, her cabin and talk to uh, husband. Now with the mobile phone, it is very easy. But you know, I have another observation with this. You know, diaspora, there is a craving. Suppose you are very hungry and there is a craving for food and you want to eat and you are shown pictures of food, what happens? I think there is something similar which happens when you miss somebody and then you are really wanting to connect with that person and then instead of actually meeting and hugging and holding and touching, uh, you are just uh, speaking. So it's not the same. So I think they are very, very interesting and Things happening in the, in the area of diaspora, which is very much apart from Mandy's charm. <laughs> Thank you, Sukha. So, today we have our last question to Wendy, and then I'll turn uh, our discussion to the floor, and I'm sure a lot of you have something to say. So, Wendy, um, how would you like to see this topic move on further on to your work in Goa? And what are your uh, well, my job.
journey of storytelling, I really don't know where it's going to take me next, but I'm hoping you know, that I'm able to take these stories to several different places you know, all over the world. Uh, in terms of 0832, uh, well, I've also reached out to a lot of artists in the diaspora, artists of Goan descent in the diaspora. One of them is you. And uh, I really want to see how, you know, my association with these artists, you know, hearing their stories and their narratives, which I honestly feel like there's so many parallel narratives, you know, that need a cohesion that I think, you know, my next steps will be in, in collaborating and, you know, bringing them under a cohesive platform. That's, that's the goal. I'm, I'm a little bit naive with uh, traveling on these expeditions, but is it possible to bring it to, like, England that is about a huge foreign population in Canada? What I'd love to do. <laughs> what, what is needed or what's involved in this uh, process? Proposals that go out to several different you know, museums and communities that would love to showcase something yeah. like that. So yeah, that's an idea. Yeah. That's an idea yeah. to Absolutely. work on. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all for your lovely answers, amazing answers and interesting answers. And uh, I'll turn it to the floor and ask anybody who would like to contribute to uh, something to say. Nobody all down to say something. So something. Go ahead, please. So well, just just a question. I know it's a silly question, but a lot of us in Goa who decided this is our home, mm -hmm. we would love to go and see the theatre, but we don't understand Konkani so well, and I know it has a lot of meaning. Now, for instance, just your little. Uh, uh, talk about the ladies going into the cabins to talk to their husband. I'm just taking your idea. Could you do something like that both in Konkani and English so that we could... It doesn't have to be that. Yeah, let me start a Konkani school for all of you guys here at Museum of Goa. So we'll get a Konkani teacher and you can come and learn Konkani. It's a good idea. idea. Yeah. It's a good idea. idea. So to just carry on, I think the, their suggestion is about uh, simultaneous translation because that's the easiest, easier way to go, go about yes. things. Yeah. And I know that in some conferences in India where you have a pan, pan language situation, yeah, they were actually uh, using commu uh, 
लो पावर्ड एफ एम रेडियो दो इट्स इ लीगल टू ट्रांसलेट एंड यू नो पीपल कुड स्विच ऑन विच एवर चैनल दे वॉन्टेड एंड लिसन टू बट मोर सीरियसली इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट लर्निंग नो नो बट अबाउट लर्निंग आई थिंक आर गोल एंड एम्बिशन हैज टू बी डिफरेंट इंस्टेड ऑफ मे बी वॉन्टिंग टू स्पीक the first goal may be to be want it to want to understand yes you know because speaking comes later yes. and the last point i want to make i came across this booklet brought out by some uh, some protestant uh, missionaries in north india and what does it contain 800 hindi words just listed 800 hindi words so the theory being i guess that if you uh, know the vocabulary you are going to immerse yourself in the language sooner or later you are going to understand it first and maybe speak it and then maybe read and write i don't know No, but it is a issue. No, but language loss is a serious language loss is a serious issue in the diaspora. While most people say, while most people say that you know you all are ashamed of your language and things like that, I have a slightly different perspective. See, uh, it took me 50 years to get the confidence to speak Konkani, and Konkani is not a very forgiving language. If pe- if you make mistakes, people are going to laugh at you. If you speak in the wrong accent, the wrong dialect, the the you know uh, the wrong vocabulary, people are not going to accept you like say German or Portuguese. It's more like a French. Yeah, people don't accept. Yeah. So that is an issue. No, no, I think it's a very good idea, and we will take action on it. But his idea of the little uh, yeah. just to begin with, yeah. even the Dalai Lama's monastery, yeah. because he speaks in Tibetan, yeah. so all of us had to have have these little radios yeah. where the translation yeah. was in Hindi. and uh, marathi whatever language problem being that needs a lot of investment no it doesn't it doesn't they are low cost they are low cost the license might be dubious the, you you don't have a license to do it but it's very low cost my background is uh, and long ago is simultaneous translation oh. equipment is not cheap no no i'm saying fm radio fm radio with a yes. low power transmitter you were still set it up someone's going to invest in Yeah, so Saint Xavier's College had had created a transmitter for three hundred rupees, but it was not legal. It was not legal. I think before we get talk Sorry. about translation, I think there's very today's technology uh, anywhere in the world. It can be anywhere in the world. It's a learned language, so all the audio, online things that we can get. Most of all, this if you have a regular like Zoom sessions or. What's happening is I think communication is is really not the problem. I think it's setting up the school and and uh, and I think a lot of people want to learn this language, especially the generations for me. For instance, my mother, my mother and father did not speak Konkani because they at that time in East Africa it was considered uh, uncool. You have to speak English. We were taught in English, and as we grew older, it became it became an embarrassing situation, especially when I came to go and first and go to speak Konkani. So it's a it's an ongoing issue, I think. Very much so. Yes. The gentleman back has something to say. Yeah, all well, continue on the same language topic because it's uh, very interesting. <laughs> But uh, just like you, I think my background is East African. And uh, again, you came here. You got confused about what you're supposed to speak. And uh, as you said, Konkani was not cool, etc. And then moved out. Didn't learn enough, enough to communicate, etc. Moved out for many, many years. Came back and then kind of was always lost. We were speaking Hindi and English and all kinds of languages except Konkani. So now when I came back a few years, I was determined to find out. to uncover the problem which i thought i knew and now i make sure that everyone who talks to me in the most complex and other languages are supposed to get threatened they supposed to talk to whoever is my house help my plumber my whoever they are supposed to talk to me in speak with me in, in konkani which is happening in big time i am a little scared of talking in konkani in the panchayat level because they would laugh at me Some of them call me a foreigner, but I think I'm doing pretty well. And another thing is that we lost, or I lost, along the way, going out and living out, is uh, go. I didn't know how my house was built, so that's where I met Sony, who's going with one of these companies, trying to figure out how the what was the you know the, what was behind building the houses in such a manner, our culture, etc., etc. And so these are two areas which have really helped. Uh, I think that too. Uh, company 
Now, and one more important thing is when I talk to shopkeepers and uh, talk to people who speak Konkani, you get treated differently. Actually, I know I'm not even, you know, for the first class, but like, you know, but uh, you get treated completely differently and half the time they do not even bother about what you're paying them, but that's, that works. is not uh, exposing Goan artists okay. as a platform. Anyone has thoughts about, uh, number one, the fact that Serendipity is ignoring Goan artists, and number two, what are the platforms for Goan artists to be more widely known? Yeah, uh, first of all, let me make it clear that uh, any activity connected with art I support. So, I do support Serendipity because it's an interesting activity and there are more, more the activities connected with art, better it is for any society. And so my first uh, stand is that I support serendipity. Now as far as uh, my comments on uh, what is happening with serendipity is, I would describe it as an external art injection to the bottoms of holes. Okay. So it is like, uh, I mean, art people from Delhi here and they come and they inject art and go for 10 days and they leave. Amount of money which is spent in serendipity is so huge, like they sometimes renovate the whole building. Every year the amount of money they spent, we could do uh, one permanent museum there. Uh, that is the kind of money they spent. I calculated uh, kind of uh, amount of money which is spent per visitor. So the total budget of serendipity and per visitor expenses and uh, based on their own uh, figures of how many people visited uh, it came to about 15,000 rupees per visitor is what is spent by them on serendipity. So and then very little of uh, Goan art is represented there. I am not a regionalist person as far as art is concerned because art is a universal language of mankind and we cannot regionalize that. So there is nothing called a Goan artist and outsider artist, I don't consider that. But since the festival happens in Goa and the infrastructure of Goa government is used here, it is very important that more and more Goan artists are showcasing their work and getting a platform. So that's all. Thank you. Could I, could I just add? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you know, uh, generally it's an important issue because uh, we face this uh, issue of scale in every uh, single field. We are facing it in books. When we have to compete with scale, you know, that's where not only Goa, but every smaller place across the country loses out. You know, then it is, you're, you're competing on size. So the Delhi's, the Bombay's, you know, would take over by, by definition. And it happens all over. If you go to Kurk, there are no good books on Kurk. You know, if we try to pick up a, a, a good, good, uh, good uh, writer, that writer will not get studied in the Goa University because they say, like, where's the canon? How, who decides the canon? You know, uh, how do we know that this guy is good? And we have that colonial mindset, neo-colonial mindset, that we are waiting for Delhi, Bombay, London, UK, uh, Portugal, Lisbon, wherever to 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 validate that writer. So it's happening in every field, every creative field. I don't know what's the answer to it. I'm just. So it's also happening not only in Goa. It's, yeah. It's also everywhere. happening in the Gulf. For example, when you see all these museums uh, sort of popping up in uh, Dubai or uh, in Saudi Arabia and everywhere, the local community is not involved. There's no local artists. This is also external injection of art to those countries. But it's all European artists doing that. That's not right. That's not right. I think I can have this conversation with Bendy. Yeah. And uh, if you go to a Dubai exhibition, there is a fair concentration on Arab artists there. They try it. They try it. Well, one thing one should not forget, and I can only speak from the experiences I've had in Berlin, where the arrogance that goes on, or the, the inability to show arrogance and pick out artists you know, to match their gallery is ridiculous. So one has to, I think, be proud of what 
Goa has to offer as far as the artists and, 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 and showcase them. I think we should not compare ourselves and say, oh, why are we not like, uh, don't even compare it to your own place. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad. It's sad to see how artists are turned away. And uh, a lot of artists have complained about it, especially in Berlin. There's a moment of exodus from Berlin, I can say it is a diaspora, of artists out of Berlin to Portugal, where the culture of Portugal is completely different from the Germans. They go open to, to art. So it's a, there's, there's a difference. Sorry, you wanted to say something. No, no, I, I'm sorry. No comparison. If anything, like, all I want to say is you wait three, three two is a brilliant platform for us to get to know who an artist and when we all part you we'll do some more of this. Thank you very much. Uh, one more thing, like yesterday I was in the factory and some artists came to me, you know, three, four, and the local artists. They were very, very young. So they said, every time we have a look at the work of art in the serendipity, uh, there are very few, one, two, three gods who are representing it. And they are represented through the curators or whatever. Okay. But uh, what I find is the lack of the government to put an injection back to the serendipity what he says. Uh, so uh, we need the community of artists to provoke the government that there should be at least five, ten artists who are representing them and they might be having a curator from Delhi or whatever the famous one, the local one, not whatever, but I think it has to be there and that is not happening. And that's why our good artists who are very young, who cannot afford even to go to Bangalore, have to sit back at home and they lose the track on the arts. And they are forever uh, forgotten. You know, so somebody has to make an initiative. You know, so I told them all these things yesterday that unless you all don't fight, nothing will happen. Because I have been speaking from the first celebrity. And uh, they told me to represent, I didn't represent, but my work was shown to somebody else. So it is not that I was uh, uh, fighting or anything with the celebrity. It's a good thing what is happening. But that is necessary that when our own government is not realizing to put their own artists on giving them the suggestion or whatever it is. So I think uh, that uh, part of our local artists has to raise this issue with the government and all the buildings which are used are government buildings. So that's how some, something has to come. There could be very simple strategies, for example, to more situate people more visibly. So that there is, I mean, all the people who come up here, they, they actually want to discover what the world artists are doing, let them come visit it. Yeah. I think yes, more can more, help us. More, what? You're very close to the audience. Come on, let's Me, go. Close yes. to the government. Yes. Oh my God. I have perhaps the biggest critic of this government because it I have the fanaticism to mix. They, they respect <laughs> you and you can speak to them. Yeah. They respect you. You can well, speak to them. We do try to speak. It's not yeah. like that. First serendipity is happened. happened. Uh, I asked the director, you know, there is something happening in the Goa for the first time. And uh, you know, the Department of Art and Culture did not know that uh, there is some art happening. <laughs> it was the chief minister, it was a direct coordination with chief minister of Goa. But not with the art and culture department or any other departments. So they were surprised to see that something big is happening, but about art. But uh, they don't know.
So yeah, absolutely. Thank you, man.